Now, the main thing then, because we, all of these effects that I've been talking about now uh, are really well defined. We know about them. We have been showing them in study after study for at least the past 20 years or so. The really crucial question is whether all of this exercise also has an effect on more cognitive functions, functions that are not directly related to the motor activity which is taking place. In some ways, it's not really surprising that when, when we do exercise and use our motor system, that those systems are being uh, changed because that's the nature of the game in many ways. But can we also demonstrate changes in other areas of the brain which are not directly being trained? So can you really become smarter by just running in the forest, or do you actually have to sit down and do uh, the hard work to do the math in order to become good at doing mathematics? Uh, so I'm not really sure that you can turn into Einstein by uh, just doing an uh, aerobic exercise. Um, but there, there is actually, and, th and this is one of the things which is going to be, I, I think, one of the main themes of uh, the next couple of days, that there is really um, data which suggests from animal experiments that there could be some effects to, to uh, look out for. Uh, and quite a lot of that work has come from, from the lab of uh, Henriette uh, Van Praag, who is going to give a talk, I think, on Friday. Uh, and I'm sure that she will be talking quite a lot about this work. Uh, so uh, she and, and uh, uh, collaborators had, had a paper in uh, 1999 um, in which they demonstrated that mice which were running uh, in a running wheel uh, for some time during the, uh, the day uh, actually performed much better when having to find their way in a maze uh, afterwards. So if you compare here the control group and then the running group, those that had done the uh, aerobic exercise and had had this running wheel in their cage uh, performed much, much better than uh, the control group here in uh, their ability of finding their way in, in a maze. Uh, what is interesting here is also that they did electrophysiological measures in which they uh, measured what is termed long-term potentiation. I'm sure you're going to hear more about that. I'm, I'm not going to go into it. It's kind of an electrophysiological marker of uh, plasticity of uh, learning effects, uh, especially in the hippocampus, which is thought to be highly involved in uh, navigation, in the ability of the animal to find its way in a, in a maze. What they also demonstrated was, and that's what is shown down here, so this is a section from the hippocampus, uh, and you sh what you should concentrate on is those red ones, which are just markers of newborn neurons. So what they suggest is that here in the running group that there are much more neurogenesis, uh, that there are new cells which are uh, developed to a much higher extent because of the ex aerobic exercise than in uh, the other rats. Uh, so that's uh, clearly uh, an interesting finding and it has been reproduced in, in uh, quite a number of studies. Uh, I think uh, one of the basic things, and, and this is uh, uh, one of the issues which have come up over the years, uh, that in, in this case you're basically comparing uh, mice which have a rather boring life. They're, they're sitting in a cage and uh, they don't have much to do. And then you have another set of rats here which you give something to do. Uh, you enrich their environment. And this is what has been shown uh, in, in several studies, that a simple environment enrichment will definitely lead to uh, changes in the brain, similar to what has been shown here. Uh, so several studies since then have been aiming at really correlating those changes to the actual aerobic exercise and doing various control experiments to really demonstrate that it's the exercise and not just the enrichment of the uh, environment, which is the a crucial factor here. Um, another study, just to uh, give you a flavor of uh, what this is uh, about. Uh, so again here, uh, using a uh, Morris maze, uh, 
which is basically a water basin where you can't really uh, look through the surface of, of uh, the water here. So it's some milk powder which has been put into it basically. So there is a hidden platform. If you throw a rat into it, it will swim around and until it finally finds the platform. And if it is a clever rat, uh, it will know where the platform is after some time. So on the eighth trial here, uh, when it's thrown into the water, it goes straight to the platform because it remembers where the platform is. Uh, so in this way, you can throw the rat into the water several times and you can see uh, how quickly it manages to find the uh, platform again. And if you do it five times as here, it will be uh, come quicker and quicker at finding it and it will swim for a shorter and shorter uh, uh, lunch, basically. So what, what has been done here is to compare young rats and uh, old rats and young rats which have been doing exercise and old rats which have been doing exercise. And you, you can see that the old rats here, they kind of have a problem. They don't really learn very much. Uh, the young rats are all doing quite well. Uh, the old rats which are doing running exercise are actually doing just as good as the young rats. Uh, so in other words, uh, the age decline in rats, I should say, in finding their way in a maze uh, can be counteracted by doing uh, some exercise. Now, we shouldn't extrapolate this to humans immediately because this is now rats. They are not humans. It's a completely different uh, task that they're doing than our cognitive learning. It really has nothing to do with solving math, finding your way in, in, in a maze. But again, it's kind of suggesting that there might be something that we should uh, have a look out for. Uh, we know also quite a lot, and, and this is what Kirsten was also uh, talking about, all the signaling pathways that are involved in this. Uh, so one of them is uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which has been shown to mediate quite a lot of these uh, effects. BDNF is known to be a growth factor, which uh, induces differentiation, survival and, uh, for, of, of uh, neurons. It also has effects on endothelial cells and uh, on um, uh, blood cells and, and will lead to increased blood flow and uh, supply of oxygen to, to the tissue. And we do know that after exercise, BDNF is highly increased, as you can see here, almost twofold. And you can see here, uh, even weeks after the exercise bout, there's still signs of uh, increased uh, BDNF uh, production. Uh, you can also see in sedentary, uh, here in percentage, uh, sedentary subjects, that the more you do exercise, the more BDNF you will have. Uh, there are also uh, now evidence from human subjects uh, suggesting that there may be some relation between uh, exercise and uh, cognitive decline, at least in elderly women, I should say. So this is a study of uh, 5,925 older women. So it's quite a large number of subjects which have been uh, investigated and, and it's been done in a um, uh, rather well controlled study uh, in which uh, the women have been uh, scored on different uh, cognitive parameters and have then been uh, followed for, for several years and they've been basically put into uh, four different classes here. Uh, so the lowest is uh, how much physical exercise they do and these are the ones that do the most exercise. And what has simply been scored is during that uh, investigative period, how much of a decline in this uh, cognitive function that they had. So the uh, women who did the least exercise had the largest decline, whereas those that did the most exercise had the least decline in, in exercise. So maybe exercise can do the trick for elder women. Maybe.